The streets around Khartoum International Airport empty. The soundtrack to this normally bustling city of five million, gunfire. Anyone brave enough to risk peering from a rooftop saw flames and drifting smoke. People are leaving right in around the airport area and like the area of heavy fighting, then it's blocked off by soldiers and there's gunshots and snipers. The rebels posted footage claiming they'd taken control of the presidential palace, while the military continued to attack their bases. Sudan's former prime minister has been warning of this chaos for months. The firing must stop immediately. The voice of reason must rule, or everyone will lose. There's no victory when it's on top of the bodies of our people. Sudan's glimpses of democracy have been all too brief. Head of the military, General Fatah al-Burhan, and paramilitary leader Mohamed Hamdan worked together to depose former dictator President Bashir, but the handshake was short-lived. Now they're duking it out over power sharing. Tanks on the streets mean only one thing, civilian deaths, over 50, including three WFP workers, prompting the UN agency to halt operations. Fighting spread to several parts of the country. Many hundreds of civilians have been wounded. The Arab League held an emergency meeting. The Pope, in his address for Orthodox Easter, called for dialogue, with the US urging return to the peace framework intended to usher in democracy. It's a fragile situation. There are other actors that may be pushing against that, that progress. But uh, this is a real opportunity to finally carry forward the um, civilian-led transition. But overseas influences have competing interests and diplomacy is never straightforward. The U.S. wants to protect trade routes through Suez and needs Sudan on side in its fight against local Islamists. Russia's importing large amounts of minerals and doesn't want to lose access. China is one of Sudan's main export markets and has invested considerably in the region. And there are local tensions with Ethiopia around water. Who do you think the generals are most likely to listen to? They are beholden mostly to the United Arab Emirates and Saudi Arabia because they are, you know, they are, they are the financiers of the Sudan Armed Forces as well as the Rapid Support Forces. And they're making them direct payment in accounts that are controlled by the commanders of these forces. The United Arab Emirates and Kingdom of Saudi Arabia are the ones that are most likely to pressure the commanders on both sides sufficiently enough to, to, to get some uh, response from them. In the last hour, the Saudi foreign minister phoned both military leaders who had this afternoon announced a fleeting four-hour pause to evacuate wounded. But Sudan's transition to democracy remains elusive.